do I know if work? I'm okay? I guess you just so. need to be like that ish. Is that good? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like kind of in the way. Okay, whatever. Does it? Is it work better if I pull it back? Chris, don't pay me no money. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is. I think it's episode sixty six. 66. Yes, it's episode 66. Well, for once we know the episode. Yeah. Uh, today we have Sister Jennifer Wright with us. Hey. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> well, first, you can tell me what do you do at the city? Okay, so I, I'm a secretary. I work for Modesto Irrigation District. and With I've water and stuff or something? Irrigation water. What does that mean? That is... Um, for farmers. Okay, okay, okay. Modesto okay. is a huge agriculture population, and so, um, anyway, so, yeah. So, you guys don't, like, deal with the sewage water? No. Okay, that's what I was thinking this whole time. No. Because <laughs> my grandpa used to do something like that for the city of Fort Lauderdale, uh-huh. and they would go through, like, this conveyor belt thing, mm. and there'd oftentimes there'd be wads of money. And so they would jump up on the conveyor belt and try to take the money as it's going. Because people, you know, flushing drugs down the toilet or the money and stuff. Uh Uh-huh. Oh, wow. I know. So they would take a bunch of the money. interesting. That was back in like the (laughs) 70s or 60s, though. So that was a long time Uh, ago. Yeah, no. So, yeah, I've been there 10 years. Oh, that's um, good. (laughs) So um, I was born in Florida. Where? Pensacola. Oh, you're basically in Alabama almost. Uh-huh. <laughs> My family is like Mobile, Alabama, Pensacola, okay. that area. Um, and when I was young, we moved to North Carolina. And so Where are there? Raleigh. Okay. I have yeah. family there too. Oh, do you? Yeah. Okay, so um, I basically kind of lived there until I moved to California about 10 years ago. Um, and so just, you know, I had a interesting um childhood I'll say um my mom was a single mom and um she raised us the best that she could um I had a stepfather that wasn't really a father and so um well I'll say I'll back up and say my dad I don't even know my dad Mm -hmm. um and so I never I grew up kind of a young girl never having like a male influence wow and so um there it is so you ended up here from florida or out of north carolina north carolina so i was born in florida i lived there till we till i was about um my mom's a nurse so she would you know take jobs in different states and so we moved to north carolina when i was about seven and so I spent most of my life there up until 10 years ago. And so, okay. um, but as a young girl, I can just remember, um, m- you know, my mom, she was a great mom. She, she worked a lot, you know, but I didn't really, um, I don't, I remember feeling very lonely when I was a child um, and always seeking love and that just grew up into my um, teen years, a young girl, no dad, yeah. you know, and you guys know I'm not that old and I have an almost 26 year old daughter. So I end up getting pregnant at a very young age, um, just being around the wrong crowds and um, just running the streets with drug dealers and just all the worst people, you know. Yeah. And I wasn't raised like that. Like, literally, I can't say there's anybody in my family that I know of that was ever, like, on drugs or, you know, that lived a life like that. But um, I was, so I can't say that that was around me. Mm -hmm. I went and put myself in those places. In that situation. Uh Uh-huh. And it took me places I never thought that I would um, go and experience. And so... um, 18, I'm having a baby, and I am, um, her dad is a drug dealer, and the night I actually told him I was pregnant, he gets popped by the police, goes to prison. No. Yes. And so um, I'm like, wow, what am I going to do now, you know? 
So I went through a few years of just trying to raise my daughter and trying to figure out life. I've always wanted to be a nurse, um, like my mama, but I didn't have the discipline. And I still, I'm young, so I'm still, you know, running the streets and in the clubs and, you know. And so I was very torn, so I would try to start college and I'd quit and or something would pull me out. And it was just... How did you juggle that, a kid, paying for a place to live and food and all of that? Drug money. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever puts food on the table. <laughs> Drug money. Um, I wasn't selling drugs, but I was always in relationships with mm-hmm. these type of men. Um, and so because, really, I had no worth about myself. You know, I didn't think um, that... I thought that this is a good life. Oh, um, you get nice things. You you know you don't have to want for anything. And um, I wasn't really I wasn't raised in church at all. My mom was going to church periodically when I was younger, but it, when I became a teenager, I was already gone. I, I was already gone. I was wild. And so, um, twenty one or twenty two. I was sitting in class one day, and it was math class, and I hate math to this day. <laughs> and I, I was just thinking. I wasn't even listening to the teacher, and I thought, I've got a baby. I can't live like this. What am I going to do? I mean, I at this point in my life, I'm having private investigators knock on my mom's door because me and a boyfriend found one of his friends dead, and they think that we did it, and it's, I mean, just wow. all kind of things. Months after that, the guy, the same guy that I'm with, he gets shot in front of me. Ooh. I mean, just all kind of things happening, and I'm sitting there like, I've got a little girl, yeah, and I'm her only parent. I can't, um, I got to do something. So I'm sitting there, and my, my grandfather was in the Army, my uncle was in the Army, and I literally walked out of class and went to the Air Force recruiter's office. No way. <laughs> and signed up for the Air Force. No. And I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to pass the ASVAB because I, I didn't finish high school. I actually got a GED. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, I'm going to just try. I'm smart. I don't, you don't have to make it through high school, to, you know, <laughs> like, you know, trying to pump myself <laughs> I pass it. Wow. And I, I go to the Air Force. What about your daughter? She had to, for a while, she went to stay with, um, in Florida with my aunt and my cousin. Okay. Because my mom, I have two younger brothers, and they were still pretty young at the time. And so it would have been a lot. And so my, my cousin was like, let me just take her for a while. I think Lexi was maybe about four years old. So they kept her for a while, and then um, she went to live with my mom. So, but I, that wasn't a how good long, move. How long were you in the Air Force? <laughs> Four years. Wow. But that wasn't a good move either because I get hooked up with the wrong people. People. <laughs> oh, dang. Yeah. And so um, I was in a relationship with a, a man there and, um, we were talking about marriage and we were going to get married and, you know, live this life and making all these plans. And uh, we met in uh, Shepherd Air Force Base, Shepherd of Wichita Falls. Sorry, I was in two places That's in, in Texas. That's in Kansas? It's in, it's in Texas. Okay. Anyway, so there was like three or four places he'd get shipped somewhere. I get, I mean, and we were just trying to hang on to the relationship. Long story short, end up finding out he's married. Oh, oh man, you need to write a book. He's married. <laughs> so I'm building something here. This is no dad. This this little girl is just mm-hmm. looking for, I just want to be loved. Fill a void. I, it's, I'm like, there's more. Yeah. But I'm looking for it in men mm-hmm. to, to be fulfilled in, you know, relationships and stuff. And every time God let it fail. Because he had a plan for me, obviously. Right. But so um, that was crushing. 
But, you know, you pick up the pieces and you just move on. And so I went through a very dark time in my late 20s. And when I turned about 30, I was just like, I, I want to get married. I never want to be married in my life, you guys. Mm-hmm. It's like I started maybe maturing or whatever. And uh, so I was a bartender at a nightclub. And I used to notice this guy that he never talked to any of the girls. He was cute, you know. <laughs> but he never talked to any of the girls. And that attracted me. Because I was like, I, after having so many disappointments and being crushed so much, I wanted, I wanted to be wanted by somebody, mm-hmm. and I wanted to be the only person that they wanted. So, um, start dating, get married, and oh, you actually got married to him. Yes, got married, and we're like this, okay. Wow. And so, uh, 2012, he decides that. So he. Um, Careful what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> so he was trying to get a job in the federal government because he was in law enforcement. So I went from one extreme to, to the, the other. other. Yeah. yeah. So uh, he applied for a job, and they actually offered him the job in 2012 to move to California. I shut it down. I was like, nope, absolutely not. <laughs> So when I was in the Air Force, I was stationed at Travis for a little while. So I've been to California, kind of experienced it. I just didn't want to move here, you know. Mm-hmm. And so he told them no or whatever. A year later, they offered him a job again. In California? He accepted it, and he didn't talk to me. Ooh. Oh. Mm-hmm. And so we moved to California in 2013. The time we got here, it was like our relationship, something just... Shifted. Shifted. It was the weirdest thing. Like, you would have to know us. I mean, we were inseparable. We got here, and it was just very distant, and I mean, it was weird. And so, 2015, I found out he had been having an affair with a lady for a year, and he left me. Wow. And I'm in California with my daughter by myself, right where God wanted me. So to back up a little bit, um, I want to say it was March of 2014. So we had been here a, a few months in California. When we moved here, we actually moved to Modesto. That's why okay. I work in Modesto. Gotcha. So I get a random call out of the blue. And let me just give you a little foundation here. Before we moved here, I used to work for IBM, and I got laid off. I didn't work for two years. I wasn't looking for a job. My my husband was the provider. I wasn't, yeah. you know. I was actually taking that time to go back to school to pursue nursing. So no job, no resume. Just got to lay that foundation, <laughs> okay? I get a call from a temp agency asking, hey, um, I found your resume online. I only been in California. I only been in California seven months, and I'm telling you, a job is the furthest thing from my mind. Mm-hmm. There's no resume. We found your resume online, and we were wondering if you'd be interested in a temporary position with Modesto Irrigation District. Um, resume with. She's like, yeah, Jennifer Wright. I go, yeah. And so I felt compelled to just call my husband (laughs) and say, some temp agency is asking me to work. Um, You know, it's only for four months. Do you care? You know, he's like, no, do whatever you want to do. I was being set up. Mm -hmm. My God. Right. So I tell him yes, you know, and I, I started working there and I, they just love me. And so about a year in, you can only be a temp for a year. And so I started talking to my boss like, hey, I'd like to stay if you, you know. And so he said, yeah, we'd love for you to stay, but we have to create a position for you. And I said, oh, does that mean I have to leave? Because I was coming up on my one year time frame. Yeah. And um, he said, no, we're gonna put you on contract. 
maybe two weeks after we had that conversation is when I found out he, Patrick was having an affair and he left me. Wow. So now, so I'm devastated because he really is the bread and butter. I wasn't making a lot of money, you know, <laughs> I was a temp. And so I'm like, what am I going to do now? And my first instinct was go back home to North Carolina. I mean, that's my stomping ground. Yeah. I know how to, you know, I could just pick up the pieces. Rent's and, only five bucks here. Man, you know, <laughs> if rent wasn't that much here back then either. It, I mean, I remember we lived in an apartment and we're paying like nine something. Oh, I mean, that's I wild. wish I could find a place to live <laughs> yeah, for nine hundred dollars now. Um, so the only thing that kept me here is I had that job. And the only people I knew in California was at that job. <laughs> And I met this girl named Sonia. She works in uh, customer service down, downstairs. And she she just, she wouldn't, she just sought me out, man. You know how when you get a vibe mm -hmm. about somebody? Yeah. And it's all over and the Lord is like, <laughs> get him. Get her, get her, go get him. <laughs> so she started befriending me and, and we were talking and I was opening up telling her, you know, my husband just left and I'm devastated, I don't know what I'm going to do, you know, blah, blah, blah. She's like, come to church with me. I'm like, girl, no. Uh -uh. <laughs> that's the last thing. Like, no, I, that's not what I need. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, girl. <laughs> you know, kind of. Well, so I was still taking classes when I started that job. I would just take them in the evening. So I'd leave work and I'd go to class and it was a girl there. <laughs> come to church with me. I'm like. No, <laughs> no, it's not what I need. <laughs> just, just come. Just, I mean, just relentless. And both of them so kind, you know, so loving. And they, it, it just was wearing me down. <laughs> so I went to church first with Sonia, which was Apostolic Tabernacle, the Mendoza's church. Oh, oh. yeah. And uh, so I went there like three Sundays in a row, and I only went there because the church started later. <laughs> so, so I was like, oh, I'll go to this church. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's a lot. So I go there, and I feel something. I sit there, I just cry, and I cry. I'm really feeling sorry for myself and my situation, you know. And then the girl, excuse me, I kind of <laughs> drank something be bubbly before I came, and I probably shouldn't have. Anyway, so um, the girl that was in class with me. I had her number because we would study and stuff together, whatever. Um, one Saturday night at like 11 or 12, I text her and I'm like, I think I want to try your church out. <laughs> um, send me the information. That was September 13th, 2015. I came the next day and uh, Aaron Bounds was preaching, what about hell? You know how Lifeline Conference, usually the preacher will stay open over the um, this Sunday yes. after? So, yeah, he, he must have Stayed preached, over? Yeah. He was preaching what about hell? This was at CLC? Mm -hmm. Yep. And I sat there, and, I mean, these people was running and carrying on, and I just was like, it was similar to Apostolic Tabernacle, but it was just, it was just different, you know? And I just felt like... This is where I'm supposed to be, you mm -hmm. know. And after the service, um, the girl's dad came up and, you know, Stan Jones, brother no. Stan. Okay, he's an elder. Um, he came up and he laid his, barely laid his hands on me and I got the Holy Ghost like wow. that. And he said, now you go down there, you get baptized in the name of Jesus. <laughs> And I was just so out of it. I was like walking, and I remember telling her, I said, where are we going? She was introducing me to all these people, you know. And I said, where are we going? And she said, oh, you, you said you wanted to get baptized. I was like, right now? <laughs> no, 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 I can't get baptized right now. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> anyway, I got baptized. And I mean, I felt like a helicopter just, you know, sometimes helicopters, they circle because they can't land. Yeah. I felt like that for years. And literally that day I felt like I landed. Wow. And I just, I mean, I just took off. I was at every Bible study. I would, anything that was going on, I wanted to be a part of it because I felt that 
love that I was looking for. It was like, this is, why well, I got to get this at 35? I've been looking yeah. for this all my life. Right. And so um, I just, I came in and I mean, I just, I, I wanted everything that God has for me. I, st- I still feel like that. When you died, Lord, on Calvary, and you pictured me in your mind, I want to be who you saw. See, because I'm, we have all this stuff from the world that we have to sh- take off. Because now we've put on Christ, right? Right. And so, you know, I still got an attitude. <laughs> I still might want to fuss you out, you know. <laughs> uh, those things that were in me, I was like, well, I'm a Christian now. Why am I still? Yeah. Why am I still doing these things, you know? And so I I learned very early to be, like, transparent with God and really raw, real raw with him. I mean, if he created me, he knows anyway what I'm going through, right? right. And, and so I I hear people sometimes like, well, you, you can't talk to God like that. He's my best friend. Mm-hmm. He's my husband now because right. I'm not married. Mm-hmm. He, he's my everything. Why can't I share with him the deep things in my heart? Mm-hmm. And so I have, I don't know where I got that from. I feel like very early on, I just felt like, you know, I've been let down by so many people and men all my life. I can trust you wholeheartedly. When, wherever you take me, I'll go. And so it was just kind of like I just dove into deep waters with God, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I'm just like want it all, you know. So that was very interesting um, because he he uses our pain. Yeah. He literally took that. That I mean, that was so hurtful. With it, it wasn't the fact that my ex husband left me; it was the breaking point for me from years of just trauma and hurt and pain and God knew it. That's why he made that man take this job and get me to California. Yeah. Cause I didn't, I didn't want to move here. This wasn't my plan, you know? And so, um, anyway, you guys talking, uh, you guys talking. Sorry. <laughs> I, do you think, cause I, I don't want to, I definitely don't have the story you have, but I have a situation that I, I kind of think is similar to an extent. Um, I didn't, I didn't want to come here. Um, and I kept, I guess like essentially running away from what I felt called to do. Mm-hmm. And I kept just putting it in the back of my mind. I didn't want to do it. <coughs> and um, for years, I feel like I kind of had that void. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cause I grew up without a dad. And so I was constantly, I guess, trying to fill it with uh, friendships or with just, I don't know, hobbies and stuff like that. And when I came here to California, I think it was my first birthday here. I think it was, I think my first or second, I turned 25 Mm -hmm. and um, they threw a huge party and I don't think I've ever had a party like this thrown. I mean, they brought presents, they had banners, they had a balloon arch, they had (coughs) a thing like laid out on the table with all these hideous pictures of me (laughs) and then they wrote all this stuff on it. I mean, like literally like a big surprise party. I hate surprises, but this literally like, I, I didn't know that I needed this. Right. And I remember at the end of the night, and it's funny you work with Ethan, mm-hmm. I was staying at their house that weekend because my mom was in town and that's where we stay. Mm-hmm. And literally, I remember sitting in that room downstairs and I was like crying yeah. to God. I was like, why did you let me wait all these years? Like to me, like you waited until you were about 35, you said. Uh, I was my 25th birthday. 34. 34. 34 and when I was 25, I was like, why did you let me wait all these years? Like, this is what I've been looking for. I mean, literally I like I couldn't breathe. I was crying so hard. Cause I was like, this is, this is the type of like, like fill or void. I like God working through them, my friends and the love that I felt. I never felt like that. Yeah. And it, it blew my mind. Like I literally was like, I don't want to ever lose this. Like I know that everyone's going to eventually move at some time, but like, why did you wait so long? Do you think that there is a reason or like a, a madness that God used all those situations to use it for his glory in the future for somebody else to testify to somebody Absolutely. else? Absolutely. 
Absolutely. Every person that um, comes in that church, I can look at a woman any on the street, anywhere, and I could, it's something familiar. I recognize something in them because I used to be there, and I feel like God just uses that so that we can minister to people because right. a lot of people, I've heard this so many times, they think I've been in church all my life. <laughs> I'm like, I've been here nine years. <laughs> uh-uh. I'm, I'm still young in the Lord, you know, but they they look at what God's done in me. Right. And I think that that he does that so that he can set us up in front of this world as this new being that he's made with this story that can connect it, those type of people. So there's people that you can reach that I can't reach, and there's people that I can reach that you guys can't reach. Mm-hmm. And so I think that, you know, God does that. But, you know, like with the birthday party and stuff, the thought that came to my mind is your dad threw your birthday party. And, like, that is uh-huh. that's so special. Yeah. But he wanted, I think you had to experience that. Yeah. You know, how would you value that birthday party if you had a birthday party every year of your life? It wouldn't right. mean anything to you because it'd just be another party. But not having that or not feeling that love from people and then gaining that and then knowing that it's from God because God put it on their heart to do it mm-hmm. is special. And I feel like those things are like – um that's like intimacy with God for me. I, I, you know, he uses people, right? And I'm like, oh, thank you, thank you. But then I'm always like, <gasps> it always go back to him because they're being led by God right. to do whatever, to give me, to say this, whatever, you know. And so it, it just, it, it makes you feel seen by God and known by him. With some seasons of life, you, you like, do you, did we break up? <laughs> Do you know me? Are you hearing me? Where are you? (laughs) Hello? (laughs) You know? But that's special. And he knew you needed that. And there's something about that that probably mended your heart Mm -hmm. in the area. Yeah. That's beautiful. Did you have a question? I have one. Yeah. I mean, I feel like it's an obvious answer that you might give, but just for, like, the sake of it, how has, like, the absence of a dad in your life affected your relationship with God? Okay, so um, that's a good one. I think that initially, when I first came in church, you know, because I have these man issues, right? And then you come in the church, and Jesus Christ is a man. <laughs> but I was so depleted, and I, I'm telling you, just seeing the people, I'd come to church and just do this. They, I want it. I don't know, you know. And so initially I would say I was a little maybe, um, I wouldn't say guarded. I'd say unsure how to interact with God because he is a father. And so I would, I would say it took me a couple years to really um, understand what it means that he's our father. I'm just a little girl. I made, I'm 43 to you guys, but I'm a little girl to him. I'm his baby that there's nothing he won't do for me. It, it, I don't have to worry about, and not to say I don't ever, but I have to grab my emotions and say, wait, daddy has me. Mm-hmm. He's, my, he's my dad. And I remember I went through a time where um, I was, as you start growing in God, you're looking at the relationships. I'm like, my daughter and my daughter doesn't have a dad I didn't have a dad I'm like (laughs) doing this in prayer to God you know and uh it just like it would just the thought just impressed upon me so strong I allowed him not to be a part of your I I protected you and allowed him to not be a part of your life Mm -hmm. I thought about that what did he protect me from because we know that there's some fathers that abuse their chil- their yeah. kids, you know, they, what did he, what did he protect me from? Mm-hmm. Whoever my dad is, I don't know, maybe he just used that as an avenue because, you know, maybe 
he wanted me to have a, I feel like not having a dad and then realizing you have a heavenly father, it, it, it's almost better to not have a dad. Mm. And in the sense of this, I don't have somebody earthly that I can depend on. I have to depend on God. Right. And because I didn't, I didn't have that growing up. So as a little girl, because I'm just a child to my daddy, when, when there's something that I need, I can't run to my parents or anyone. I have to go straight to him. And I think that that just, it, it, it's intimacy. It's intimacy with God. And, it's, and I think that, you know, that changes and it grows, too, over time. I think you just start it kind of like, um, I want to know you. Yeah. And I don't want to know you in a superficial way of going to church. And I've never really been a person that is kind of ride the fence. Or I'm all in or I'm all out. Right. So I want to know you as a father, and I want to know what that means. And God does things like he gives you a birthday party, or he gives you things that you don't even, you 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 know, he, he speaks things to you that only you can, you guys are looking at me like, <laughs> no, no. no, I'm just like so <laughs> zoned in. Yeah. But he's so, he's so personal. Mm-hmm. He's so personal that I feel like I'm way off of your question. No, it's fine. Yeah, whatever, you know. <laughs> it's just like it grows. And, and God created us for relationship, right? Right. So why can't we look at him and, and, and love him and Talk to him like a father. I don't. I, I don't right. know. Anyway, yeah, I'm just babbling. No. <laughs> I feel like I'm getting off to. No, know. no, no. That that's right on the my my other question because you'd mentioned this earlier because you're talking about you're always trying to fill a void with with an emptiness that was in your life. I have a lot of friends, and then me myself included, and and even some friends now that they either had a missing parent or parent died or let's say they were in a long relationship for years and they got broken up with and and now they just they're constantly seeking a relationship from either a girl or a guy to fill that void and it's like they just keep trying the same thing over and over and over but it's like yeah no they believe in god like yeah no like that even like us as apostolics these are like all apostolic friends they they say believe in god and everything but then they go and try to fill that same void that they know can only be filled with god with a person exactly what would what would you say to that person from your experience so i would say okay so let's see that's been like nine years that my husband took off so i'm gonna answer the question by yeah. Saying something here. So I have had an extreme amount of loneliness. Okay. <clears throat> and so I, I'd be like, oh, I need to get married, Lord. Okay. Now that I'm saved, you're going to send me a good <laughs> husband. Now I'm going to get a good man. Well, I quickly learned that God wants me to know him intimately first. Right. And the reason why that void is there is because he's like, yeah. Come spend time with me. Come talk to me. When you feel lonely, I literally have had to grab myself um, because you do feel the void with it could be friends. It could be food. I mean, anything. I've had seasons in my life where I'm always out. I'm, I, I can't. I, I live alone. Yeah. I can't go home. I got to be at somebody's house. And God is like, I don't. I, I want you to come and be with me. Right. And so when I feel that, I it, for years I didn't even recognize I was doing that, trying to fill it with, you know, but still having that, because you have to leave and go home, right? Or you, mm-hmm. it, when you lay down at night and your thoughts are, you know, roaming and 
you know, the feelings of emptiness is there. And so I literally started grabbing myself when I feel that, okay, wait, why do I feel like this? Okay, Lord, right now, I'm feeling really lonely, God. And I want to feel your presence. I want to talk to you. I want to spend time with you, God. I want you to feel whatever void it is that I'm feeling right now. Right. I'm not going to run. You're my everything. Everything is in him, right? I'm not going to run somewhere to feel it. I've done that all my life. Mm-hmm. What you, so I, I get like that with God. But I feel like you have to come to a place where you're willing to be uncomfortable. Because God's not always, you don't always have Holy Ghost goosebumps and you're crying. And you, yeah. No. Can you just be with him and know that he's there? He's with us right now. We ain't feeling nothing, but we're safe with our dad. Mm-hmm. We're, we're, you know, and I feel like too. This is blasphemous, <sighs> but we don't always have to talk in prayer. Mm-hmm. Go to prayer and sit there. Let him talk to you. Right. I have been doing that so much, probably. I don't know, I'd say in the last year, I've changed my prayer where I'm not I'm not going like, okay, Lord, thank you for this. Gotta go. Yeah. Time to go to work. No. I think about it like this. When you're in a relationship with someone, right? I don't know if you guys got girlfriends. If you do, you need to let me know who they are. So I'm watching them, okay? You got a girlfriend? I wish. You got a girlfriend? Not yet. Okay, we're gonna pray. Y'all can be Y'all can get some girls. Okay. <laughs> Episode 66. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, when you're in a relationship, you don't always have to be doing something right. Don't you just hang out? Yeah. Why can't we do that with God? That's what he desires. Right. He made us for fellowship. Our whole existence is to be with him. Right. But it's uncomfortable. And that's the part that people don't want to nobody wants to go and sit and like okay i'm gonna try this thing out where i'm <laughs> go sit in the prayer room for two hours it's like oh it's only been five minutes <laughs> <laughs> hey lord okay we just go hang out god <laughs> jesus i love you <laughs> oh man i'll try it again tomorrow <laughs> you know it, it, yeah. it, it, it's uncomfortable but i think what it is 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 taking those moments it's, it's stopping and recognizing what am I feeling right now and surrendering that to God and allowing him to fill that void. Right. Otherwise, you just, I mean, people are fickle. And you know what God will do? He'll start creating situations where to let you down. Oh, yeah, we're going to have coffee. At me. I can't make it, girl. Sorry, I got to cancel. Oh, shoot, I don't want to spend the day by myself <laughs> well god set it up so you can be yeah. alone with him you know what i mean yeah there's been many times where i found myself like i had something planned out and then it's all getting canceled and i'm like sitting there by myself and i'm like okay well i have to do something i, I can't yeah. and i feel like prayer room gosh no uh <laughs> like i try to fill it with something i'm like no i don't want to do that god doesn't want me to pray to him right now yeah, like yeah, try to yeah. change it but then I look back and I'm like, oh, maybe God was trying to make up time so that I could spend with him. And I just totally ignored it. Yeah. Or oh, what about this one? <clears throat> you find yourself scrolling. Scroll, mm-hmm. scroll, scroll, scroll. Ha, 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 laughing. That I've caught myself doing that. I'm constantly, I'm not perfect. I delete social media off my phone because I'm like, this is wasting my God time. Right. I just spend an hour sitting here laughing at you know, memes and, <laughs> and things, you know. I delete, delete, delete. And I make myself sit there with God and talk to him. And guess what? Start doing that. He start talking back. <laughs> and when he start talking back, he starts saying, he, he talk outlandish. Because mm. he, he outside of this world, right? You know, right. and you're like, I don't even know what to do with that, Lord. I'm just going <laughs> to, um, that goes on the shelf. <laughs> yeah, on the show. Yeah, I'm gonna continue to pray about that one. Uh-huh. Okay, Lord. Yeah, uh-huh. you want to build an ark? Oh, okay, yeah, all right. I'll okay, put that one on the show. You tripping? All right. 
tripping, tripping Lord. Okay. <laughs> have you, have you, this is probably one of my last questions. When and through your whole journey, was it, did you feel like God had to bring you to like a breaking point to where all you had, you had nowhere else to turn, but like up? Or was there a time where like, you're like, okay, I'm going to have to trust God because I don't know how I'm going to do this one. I feel like I live a life of that. <laughs> because he requires total dependence, right? Right. But a specific moment, I don't know. I think it was just coming into church, you know, temp on a job, needing to move out of the place that I was living because all of the memories is there, you know. Yeah. Just uh, all these things that seem to be, you know, um, impossible things right away he I can tell you guys when I made the decision to come to God I feel like my first year he was just answering every prayer I had gosh Lord I can't, I'm just like making enough money Lord I'm used to living comfortable mm -hmm. what, what's this <laughs> I had a paycheck coming in and now it's gone right and I so once I became permanent I got a pay raise Six months later, they they changed my job title. I got a huge pay rate. It was like God wow. was just like, I just come with me, daughter. I got you. Just I I mean I could tell you time after so many times that God has just did something miraculous for me because, like I keep saying, He is all I have. Right. And He wants total dependence, so He allows trials and tribulations so we can reach out cry out to him and depend on him but um there was one time just real transparent there was okay so 2017 okay so let me back up a little bit so when i came into church it was like God connected me with all of these ladies that were just pumping faith into me about, you know, God can save your husband. He can restore your marriage. He can, you know, he can put it back together, you know. And I wanted that because the fear, I really had fear of being alone. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to be alone. And I'm in California. And I'm, it was just fear of the unknown of what life was going to be like, mm -hmm. you know. And so 2017 is when our divorce was final. A week later, this man started working at my job, a nice-looking man, a, a, a nice man to me. He was being real <laughs> nice to me because the devil know everything. <laughs> he, knows. I, he knows what you like. Yeah. Okay, so... My flesh is, I'm crushed, I'm crushed. I've prayed almost two years for my husband, you know. God decided not to restore that relationship back or whatever, okay. So I got into this emotional thing with this guy, mm -hmm. texting him and going to lunch. And we just co-workers, we just co-workers though. But in my heart. In my heart, I had an attitude with God. And I was kind of like, I'm going to do what I want to do. Mm. That old Jennifer, okay, I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm still coming to church every week. And, you know, I'm, I, there's no outward sin. Mm -hmm. But in my heart was rebellion, okay? Right. And that went as far as to, um, you know, there was a situation where there was one night that I just, I, I'm just going to be real transparent because, and I don't really, really want to say this, like <laughs> <laughs> but I know people struggle with this. There was one night I was going to let my flesh have its way and God intervened. Mm -hmm. Okay. He was totally drunk and we were, in the, we were out of town. I was out of town at a conference, you know, whatever. And he had been drinking. And so we were in a car, and I had to make a decision if I was going to 
how are we going to end the night? Okay. Mm -hmm. And the root of this was I was very hurt with God. Right. I was disappointed. And I, I thought, you could do anything. How come you didn't restore my marriage? Right. I was being a bratty kid because I didn't get my way. And that man sobered up. He's a backslider. Okay. Oh. He sobered up and he said, you don't want to do this. You'll regret this in the morning. Wow. I, like, I just got on, chills. <laughs> That's crazy. Yes. I went to my hotel room because I was, we, we were out of town at a conference. I have never had a better prayer meeting in my life. Wow. In that moment, it was like, because I, I sat on these pews for after I got the final judgment of my divorce, and I fought tooth and nail and prayed and fasted, did everything I thought I was supposed to do. And when he said, no, that door is shutting, Something in me was like, I'm going to do what I want to do. And that night, God intervened because I would have regretted that. Yeah, I was totally operating in rebellion, you know. And I went in that room and for like three hours. I cried. I screamed. And I can't express to you that my daddy just wrapping his arms around me in that moment and just restoring something in my heart and I thought to myself that's when I made the decision I would never try to replace what what I really need with the things that it's where it just it don't work right it just don't work so I would say that's probably the one time that I had to wow really crowd to God that story uh reminds me of that preaching that you listen to all the time by uh David Puentes where he talks about thanking God for the closed doors. Oh, yeah. Because can you imagine what if that relationship opened up? Yeah. And for all you know, that relationship was what was going to take you away from God yes. and away from church it and would've. totally backslidden. Totally. Wow. God said, nope. Yep. He's nope. saving you. <laughs> I know. I, and when I think about that, you know, I'm like, wow, Lord. It, it, it just, it makes me love him so much because when we're stupid, yeah. Remember, we just little kids. Mm -hmm. How many times I look at my grandson and I'm like, look at this boy. He don't know no danger. And <laughs> I have to rescue him. Yeah. Don't do this. Don't run in the street. And God does the same thing for us. You know, right. He did it for me that night. And it broke open my heart to really get the healing that it needed. Wow. I mean, it was a, a powerful prayer. Just me and God in that room. That's awesome. And guess what? I left there block delete don't talk to me it, i okay so here's another thing i actually had to pray god i'm willing to give my job up because i i that night something changed in me something broke in me i said i can't work with him because it, right. it seemed like after that night the, the enemy is he cruel now <laughs> it, it just seemed like i just couldn't mind my business and be at my desk you know, right. come to my bed call and text you know so i started praying remove me or remove him remove me or remove him i'm willing to lose my job that's how much this relationship with you means to me well i i'm still there <laughs> <laughs> but you know it, but he removed him he removed him yeah. oh. he removed him Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. And <laughs> I love hearing these stories. <laughs> I just, you know, that night something, it, it was Shifted. solid for me. Like, I, I, you know how you have a moment where you make a decision like, no, I'm not going mm -hmm. back. I want this. I'm moving forward. No matter what comes my way, you know, it was that night for me. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Do you have any more questions? No, but I feel like. There's only been like a small handful of podcasts where not that I'm at a loss of words, but I'm just in awe of like the other person, their story. And like, I feel like this is one of them where I feel like I don't have questions. It's just, I'm just in awe. Yeah. Like, again, I'm just speechless. It's just, just a beautiful thing. And it is just, it's like, it's the love of God, man. And we can't, he would say to me and my friend, all the, my prayer partner, if you only knew how much I love you. Wow. You know, it's like, 
God, I can't fathom that. I want to I want to know. And I don't know if we'll ever know how much he he loves us. Wow. If 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 everybody only ever knew that we came in here with having no idea <laughs> what we were about to talk about today, we're just like, okay, we'll just hit record and just kind of <laughs> wing this. And 100% like God oh, yeah. was in this. It, it's it's going to speak to somebody. It spoke to me. Yeah. So it spoke to one person at it least. It speaks to me every time. I, I It just, I'm like, that's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Girl, yeah. I remember that. He did hold yeah, me yeah, from yeah. that. That's that right. is right. That's right. He's a keeper if you want to be kept. <laughs> Here I am. <laughs> that's awesome. Do you have any anything else to say? No. Okay. No. This has been episode 66. That was really, okay. <laughs> 